Hey Timberlake, we've had an incredible summer this year with camps, mission trips, barbecues, and local outreach. But we're even more excited about what we've got coming up this fall. It all starts on September 8th with our Back to School Bash. We've got three weeks of events lined up for your kids, starting off with Seahawks Sunday, followed by Hedgehog Sunday, and wrapping up with Dig It Sunday, where every kid will go home with a geo. And of course, every Sunday they'll hear engaging, practical message from the Bible. It's the perfect time to invite someone you know. Also, our fall groups are about to launch. We believe life is better together and being part of a group is one of the best ways to get plugged in, create lasting friendships, and take your next right step in your faith journey. We've made it super easy to join a group. We have options every night of the week for every life stage, and some even include childcare. I've met some of my closest friends by being part of a group, and I highly recommend it. Signups will start in the beginning of September, so keep your eyes open for the group list coming soon. We've got a lot to look forward to in the fall, but it just wouldn't be the same without you. So I hope you'll join us right here at Timberlake. Well, good morning, Timberlake Church. It is a joy and it is an honor to be able to be here with you this morning. I love your church. I love the team here. I love your pastor, Pastor Dave and Rindy, even though he's a Packers fan and I'm a Bears fan. Uh, and I just wanna say, you know, it's amazing, Pastor Dave, that you're coming up on one year in a couple months of being the lead pastor here. And I've seen a lot of pastors that come in their first year, they're just kind of settling in, but I can see that you're not having just been settling in, you've been leading with courage, with obedience, with vision, and I'm just so expectant for what God's gonna continue to do here at Timberlake through your leadership. And so, church, can we give it up for Pastor Dave? You guys have a gift. You have a gift in Pastor Dave and Rindy, and I get to meet a lot of pastors, and yours is special. Love, just love him as authenticity and just love for God and for people. And I wanna take a moment and just introduce my family to you. Got a photo here. I know everyone just wants to see the golden doodle first. That's our puppy, Remy. Second to Remy is my husband, Adam, and we've been married for 12 years this weekend, celebrating that anniversary. Uh, thank you, 12 years. It's incredible, it's a joy, it's a gift. And these are our two boys, Nash and Ryder. Nash is eight years old, Ryder is seven years old. And whenever people ask us, what are your kids like? My husband always says, well, Nash is a great kid and Ryder is a great time. And I think that kind of sums up their personalities. Little wild, second child, that's kind of how it is. But Adam and I get the privilege of serving as executive pastors at City First Church based in Rockford, Illinois. And I love that here at Timberlake, we're continuing this bumper sticker theology series. It's been amazing so far. I've been watching online. If you missed the last two weeks, go back and check it out. It's been incredible. But you know, at City First, we actually pass out bumper stickers to people in the church. We just tell them, if you're gonna take a sticker that has our church name on it, please, do not be a crazy driver. Don't be speeding, cutting people off, flipping people off. And so these are what our bumper stickers look like. And last winter, I was pulling up to a stoplight and from a distance, I could see the city first sticker. And I thought, this is awesome, representing the church. But then as I got closer, I saw the sticker that was next to our church sticker. We have a photo of that for you as well. Yeah, so I don't know how it is in the Pacific Northwest, but in the Midwest, people love Jesus, but they also like might cut you. It's just a different thing. So pray for us there in the Midwest. We need it. But today, as we continue this bumper sticker theology series, the title of today's message, if you're taking notes, and I hope that you are, is Too Blessed to Be Stressed question mark, because I think we wonder, can you be blessed and stressed at the same time? Have you ever asked somebody, hey, how you doing today? And they're like, oh, too blessed to be stressed. But you're thinking, but you look stressed and you seem stressed and your whole family seems stressed. You know, speaking of blessed and stressed, I heard about a family and they were blessed with a two-year-old and the dad decided to go to the grocery store, just him 
and his two-year-old. So they're in the grocery store and the two-year-old is just throwing a fit. He's screaming, he's yelling, he's knocking everything off the shelves and the dad's just trying to remain calm. So he's walking through the grocery store and he's just saying, Johnny, it's gonna be okay. Johnny, don't be stressed. Johnny, we're gonna make it through. We're gonna get to the end. It's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be okay. You're gonna be fine. This lady approaches the dad and she's like, I'm just so blown away by how calm and kindly you are speaking to your son, Johnny. And he said, oh, ma'am, my son's name isn't Johnny. My name is Johnny. <laughs> Lord, help me. You can do it. You can make it through. And maybe today as we're talking about too blessed to be stressed, you're wondering, can I be blessed and stressed at the same time? And maybe right now in your life, you're experiencing some level of stress. Yeah, you've got God's blessing, but you also feel like you've got a lot of stress. And maybe that's something that's going on with your family or work or health. And I believe that we can be blessed and stress at the same time. And if you're feeling that stress, you are in the right place. The best thing you can do is keep coming to church every Sunday. It's gonna help us grow in faith and learn how to grow and trust God in the midst of whatever it is that we're walking through. So today, we're gonna to be looking at a couple from the Old Testament portion of the Bible who were experiencing God's blessing, but they were also experiencing some stress. And we're gonna learn from them what to do and what not to do. So before we open up the word, God's Bible, I'm just gonna take a moment and pray. And let's just get our hearts and our minds set on God today. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for Timberlake Church. I thank you for this amazing team and I thank you for the pastors here. God, I thank you for everybody who showed up to church today. God, that they prioritize this time with you and I thank you, God, that you have something fresh for each and every one of us, that you have something new for each and every one of us. It's never just another Sunday. God, we are here expectant to encounter you, to receive fresh hope, to have breakthrough in our lives. We believe you can do it. So God, as always, I pray that you would help me to get out of the way so that you can have your way minister to each person exactly where they're at with exactly what they're walking through. And in your name we pray, amen. So the couple that we're gonna be focusing in on today, their names are Abraham and Sarah, also referred to as Abram and Sarai in the Bible. And this couple was like a power couple. They were a blessed couple, a favored couple by God. And they were, from the outside, everything looked great for Abraham and Sarah. In fact, Abraham was a great leader. And so we're about to pick up where he goes into battle. And after he went to this battle, he had a small army, and he was up against this really big army and the odds were not in his favor. And yet God gave Abraham victory. And so it seems like everything is good from the outside. It looks like he's got it all together. He's a leader. He just had victory. He's got strategy. He's got an amazing wife. She's beautiful. He's hanging out with all the important people of the day, the kings and the queens. His social media followers are skyrocketing. He's an influencer, swipe up Abraham 24. So from the outside, it all looks good. But on the inside, Abraham and Sarah are wrestling and they're struggling and they're waiting on God for something. They have stress about what they're waiting for and Abraham and Sarah are waiting to have a child. And in this biblical context, when you had a child, it was really important. It meant that you had an heir, that you had a legacy. There was great value in that. So they felt like they were without because they didn't have a child. And what I love about Abraham, this great leader, prosperous, victorious, when he's feeling stressed, he doesn't run to other things or people. He's not posting about it on Facebook. What he does is he gets with God and he has a conversation. And we're gonna pick up on that conversation in Genesis 15. And it says, sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abraham Abram in a vision and said to him, do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. 
You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, no, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. So here we see that Abraham is coming to God with the stress that he's facing in his life and God cares about what Abraham cares about. And I wanna encourage you today, God cares about what you care about. If it's on your heart, it's on God's mind and God gives Abraham a promise. And do you know in the Bible, there's over 8,000 promises that God gives to you and to me. And why does God give us so many promises? Because I want you to think about when you need a promise. It's when you need help believing or trusting somebody. Anybody ever said to you, no, really, I promise. Because they want you to believe what they're saying. And God knew that we would need help believing, just like Abraham would help, need help believing that God would fulfill the promise that he's given him. So I can imagine that Abraham hears from God, we're gonna have a child and he runs and he finds his wife, Sarah, and they're getting older. They've already been waiting. He sees Sarah, he's like, Sarah, you're never gonna believe it. God is finally gonna answer our prayer. God just told me that we will have a child. And I can imagine them just being so elated. They're laughing, they're crying, they're happy. They're spinning around like in a Hallmark movie. They're just so excited about this promise. But then as the emotions begin to wear off and they begin to settle into the moment, Sarah wants to know, so what exactly is the plan? She's a planner. Anybody in here a planner? You've got plans for your plans. I know you people. And so Sarah says to Abraham, God said that we would have a child, but what else did he tell you? Like, are you giving me the guy version here? What else do you know? And see, what's happening is that God told her what would happen. God told her what would happen, that they would have a child. And a lot of times in our lives, God will tell us what he will do. See, Abraham and Sarah were waiting on God for a child, and maybe you find yourself waiting on something from God as well. I think we all do. Maybe right now you find yourself in a waiting season and maybe God's given you a promise that you will have that promotion, that you will have a family, that you will have a spouse, that you will be healed, that you will experience breakthrough or freedom from addiction or whatever it is that you've been waiting on God for. But a lot of times to receive the promise doesn't mean that we automatically receive the timeline to the promise and that can be difficult. See, God told her what, but God did not tell her when. And the same is true for us as we find ourselves in waiting seasons and oftentimes it's the waiting that produces the stress. We're not sure how this is gonna work out or how it's gonna come together. And Sarah was stuck between knowing what God had told her, but she didn't know when it would come to pass. Because to receive God's promise doesn't mean we automatically receive the timeline to the promise. And what I wanna challenge us with today is how will we live between the what and the when? How will we live between what God has told us, the promise we've received, and then when that promise finally comes to pass? See, our girl Sarah started to get impatient in between the what and the when. Like she was a make it happen person. Any make it happen people in the place. She heard they were gonna have a baby. She's like, well, let's get into go mode. She ordered everything she needed from Amazon there the same day, next day delivery, she's feeling good. They go to the store, they buy paint, they paint the nursery. Then the color's not right, so they repaint the nursery and they're ready to receive this promise. But then a day goes by and then a week goes by and then a couple weeks go by a month goes by, two months, six months, a year goes by, years go by, and they haven't seen God fulfill the promise that he given them. And I think initially when they first received the promise, they were so full of faith and gratitude. God, you're so good. You heard my prayers. 
God, you're so good. You're gonna answer what we've been longing for. God, you're so good. You're gonna alleviate the stress that we've been experiencing. But in between the what and the when, they started to lose hope. They started to lose faith. They started to get impatient. And so we see them do what none of us have ever done. They begin to take matters into their own hands. They think, okay, God, you're not moving along the timeline that I desire to, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna help you out. And Sarah leverages her influence in the family, and this is her great solution. So Sarah said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. And I just wanna pause right here because what we're seeing in between the what and the when is Sarah stopped focusing on the promises of God and she started focusing on the problems that she could see. And any time that we're in a waiting season, any time that we're experiencing stress, the enemy always wants to focus on the problem, the problem, the problem. But what God wants us to do is focus on the promises that he's given us. But Sarah decides to focus on the problem instead of the promise and it leads her to make some bad decisions. She says, since God's prevented me from having children, she says to her husband, go and sleep with my servant girl. Perhaps I can have children through her. Uh Uh-oh, and Abraham agreed with Sarai's proposal. Can we just pause Timberlake Church and have a spiritual moment and say, what the what is going on here? This is not gonna end well. Sarah says to her husband, go and sleep with someone else. We can have a child through her. And even worse, Abraham agrees. You thought that your family was Jerry Springer. It's got nothing on what's going on in the Bible. So much drama, so much craziness. And the crazy thing is that Abraham goes along with the plan and what happens is the servant girl does get pregnant and things do get complicated. They get complicated. And one of the many lessons that we can learn from Sarah's story, if we find ourselves in the middle of waiting, is don't complicate God's promises with your solutions. If God said he's gonna do it, trust that he's gonna do it. If God said he's gonna make a way, believe that he'll make a way. If God said he's gonna heal, give him thanks before you've even seen the healing come to pass yet. If God said it, he'll do it. If it's his will, it will happen. And we've gotta get on board with God and trust his timing instead of trying to get God on board with our broken Jerry Springer plans. But that's what Sarah did. And it got complicated. And I wanna remind us today that we can trust God in the middle of our waiting. See what happened was Sarah got impatient. Anybody else ever get impatient? No, just me, just the pastor up here. I get impatient. I go to the grocery store and I'm like, which line's gonna be the shorter line? And then I get in the wrong line, you know? We all wanna just have things be quick and efficient sometimes. And Sarah got impatient in the waiting. And what happens when we get impatient is that our judgment is impaired by our impatience. We start making decisions we normally wouldn't make when we find ourselves not trusting God and getting impatient to see his promise fulfilled. You know, have you ever had a meal that's like, it's taken a long time to cook, meat that's marinated, right? Maybe on the smoker overnight, there's been fresh ingredients, everything's being prepared and it's taken a long time. It's worth the wait, right? Thanksgiving dinner tastes so good because it takes so long to make. And when we eat this food that tastes good and it's been prepared and it's been seasoned, it's delicious and it's nourishing, and we're grateful for it, but have you ever been really hungry and you don't wanna wait? So you're like, I'll just take that microwave meal. I'll just run through this drive-through. It's not really good, but it seems good. Why? Because we're impatient. And Sarah found herself feeling impatient. So she's like, I'm gonna cut corners. I'm gonna try to do it my way. And her judgment was impaired by her impatience. By her impatience. And as we're waiting, we really have two ways that we can wait. The first thing is we could try to do it our own way. And when we try to do something our own way, what we're really doing is we're placing our trust in ourselves. 
We're saying, okay, how am I gonna figure it out? Do you ever do that? There's a problem and you're going, what am I gonna do about it? How am I gonna figure it out? And really what we're doing is we're looking to ourselves for the solution, which really just produces more stress because we're limited in our wisdom. We're limited in our resource. We're limited in our ability. But when we trust God and his ways, that's the other option. And when we trust God, we're saying, God, I trust you and your ability. I trust you and your provision. I trust you and your goodness. I trust you and the amazing ability that you have to do whatever you want because you are God and I am not. And if we find ourselves trusting us, trying to do it in our own way, instead of trusting God, we usually seem to be going down the spiral of ingratitude. Because what would have happened if Sarah would have focused on God's promises, said, I trust you, God. I trust your promises. God, I thank you that you've heard us. I thank you that you see us. But instead, she started being ungrateful. And this is what we see the journey look like. Ingratitude will inevitably lead to comparison. Like maybe in your job right now and you're wishing it was something else. So you're stop being thankful for what you do have and you're focusing on what other people have. Well, why are they getting the promotion? And then it goes on to say in comparison, if left unchecked, will give birth to envy and jealousy. And at its root, jealousy says, God owes me. What God's given me isn't enough. I want what he's given someone else. But God loves you and he cares about you. And he's got great plans and purposes for you. Don't compare yourself to someone else. Instead, say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you've made me. And when we start to practice gratitude, we begin to th see things shift in our life. See, the enemy wants to work you over between the what and the when. He wants you to feel forgotten about. He wants you to feel less than. He wants you to feel that God favors somebody else over you. He wants you to feel discouraged. He wants you to feel frustrated. The enemy wants you to wait in bitterness and jealousy and anger. Why? Because when we wait that way, it diminishes all that God has for us. But if we can wait in gratitude, trusting God, we begin to see things change. I love what it says in Psalm 34.1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Do you know what at all times means in the Bible? At all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. I love this verse because it challenges me, but it's also brought me through some difficult times. You know, the Bible doesn't say to be thankful for all circumstances, but the Bible does say to be thankful in all circumstances. Sometimes when we're thankful and when we're giving God praise, it's even a sacrifice of praise. It can be difficult to do. But I've learned that if I can praise God when things are good, when things aren't good, when I have a broken heart, when I can't understand, my perspective begins to shift. Another translation says, I will magnify the Lord. Do you know what happens when we magnify something? If you take a magnifying glass and you put it over something, what happens? The thing that you're magnifying gets bigger. And when we magnify the Lord, we bless his name. That means we worship him, we honor him, we thank him, we praise him. When we do that, God gets bigger and our stresses begin to get smaller. God's character begins to be on the forefront of our mind. And we can see that he's good even if the situation isn't good. I remember when our youngest son Ryder was born, he was, we had a healthy pregnancy and then he was born and for moments after he was born, the doctor came in and said, he's showing symptoms of one of two different diseases. And we had to go through eight months of testing before we were able to diagnose what he had. And I remember those eight months of unknown, of heart tests, of getting his kidney scan, all the things you can imagine with a newborn baby. But Adam and I, my husband, we rallied our faith together and said, we will bless the Lord at all times, even when we don't understand. And praise God, Ryder is doing great. He just had an isolated swelling in his feet, something called Milroy disease. 
But I'll never forget that journey. And even now, seven years later, we're still praying for complete healing. We haven't seen that yet, but praise will continually still be on my mouth, believing for what I haven't seen yet. Why? Because when we wait, we don't wait passively. We don't wait defeated. No, we are followers of Jesus Christ. And if you're not, you're at least curious enough to be here today going, God has something to offer me. Even in the waiting, we can have hope. Even in the waiting, we can trust. And this is what happened with Sarah, okay? What if she would have waited with this posture of praise? I think she would have spared herself and those around her a lot of difficulty, a lot of complications. Because when we wait trusting God, we can wait with confidence and joy and contentment. But Sarah didn't do that. But here's the good news, even though Sarah didn't wait, maybe how God wanted her to wait, do you know that God is still good and will be faithful to his word? Some of you maybe feel like I've screwed up too much. Do you know that God doesn't consult your past to determine your future? Even though Sarah screwed up, God still fulfilled his promise to her. And in Galatians 4, 21 through 23, it says this, the scriptures say that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise. And when that son was born, they named him Isaac. And Isaac had a son named Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons, one of whom was Judah. And from the tribe of Judah came King David. And from the lineage of King David came Mary. And from Mary came Jesus, the savior of our world. But Sarah didn't wanna wait for that. If she could have seen the end from the beginning, it would have changed how she waited between the what and the when. And what we can learn from her is that as we're waiting, just how God brought something great from the promise he gave her, we gotta believe that something great is on the way. My prayer for you today, Timberlake Church, is that you would begin to believe that something great is on the way. Something great is on the way for you. Something great is on the way for your marriage. Something great is on the way for your children. Something great is on the way for your community. Something great is on the way. Instead of believing the worst, can we begin to expect the best? I love this verse that's found in Isaiah and it says this, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for and hope in him shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. I love this translation because it's showing us how to wait and what the benefits of waiting God's way are. Those who wait on God, who expect something good from him. Those who wait for God, looking for God to move instead of looking at all the problems, looking for ways they can praise God instead of all the ways they can complain, looking for ways they can give God worship and focus on his promises instead of all the negativity that's happening. Those who have hope in him, what, what does that verse say? That we will have renewed strength, that we will not become weary in well-doing. Have you ever seen an eagle in the wild? I remember last summer, I was in a big green space with a bunch of family and we're all talking and laughing and then we look over and we see this eagle and it's just standing there. And we all kind of stopped talking and just were looking at this majestic bird. And with just one flap of its wings, it just soared so high above everything on the ground. And we were in awe. I thought my husband was gonna start singing our national anthem. It was like a majestic moment. But just how the Bible likens when we wait on God, expecting that something great is on the way, looking for him, eyes fixed on Jesus, with our hope in him, he promises us we're gonna have renewed strength. It says that we'll change. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna leave church today the same way that I came in. I wanna have a changed perspective, a changed heart. I wanna have increased faith and hope. We'll change when we wait God's way. 
And when we place our hope in him, believing that he will fulfill the promises that he's given us. And as I've been praying for you these past couple weeks, as I've been preparing to be here with you today, I keep thinking of this verse from Proverbs 13, and it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And as I've been praying for you, this verse keeps coming to my mind because I believe that some of you in here today, you've been deferring hope. Your marriage has really been struggling and you've been putting off hope that God can even heal it. Been facing some sort of sickness or maybe somebody that you love is. Stop believing that God can intervene. You've been wrestling with your job and wondering when is it my turn and you stop giving God praise and you stop hoping and believing that he's gonna advance you forward in your career. Some of you feel like you missed your purpose in life. I wanna remind you today, as long as you have breath in your lungs, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He created you on purpose and he created you for purpose. Whether you're two years old or 102 years old, God is not done with you yet. Would you have hope to believe that God has great plans for your life? You didn't miss it, you didn't screw it up. God loves you and he sees you. And my prayer is that instead of us being like Sarah, who tried to manipulate, cut corners, willpower her way through life, trying to bring her own solutions to God's promises, we would be people who say, God, I trust you. I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. I'm tired of just living stressed all the time. I want to acknowledge your blessings. I want to walk renewed strength and power and peace and hope and joy. Would you go ahead and stand to your feet this morning? We're gonna end with the song and we actually carved out time to be able to sing this song. It's all about trusting in God. And what I know about you and what I know about me is it can be easy for us to try to trust in ourselves and figure it out on our own. But this morning, my prayer is that a great exchange would take place. That you would say, God, I trust you with my past, my present, my future. God, I'm sorry for missing out on the blessings because I've just been so stressed. And as we praise God and as we fix our eyes on him, I believe that he's gonna become more prominent in our minds and our hearts, that our faith is gonna be lifted and the things of this world are gonna begin to fade away. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every individual here. God, I pray for the person who's been deferring hope in their life. It makes the heart sick when we do that, it produces anxiety and worry and despair. God, I pray for renewed hope today for individuals, hope over marriages, hope over families, hope over careers, hope over purpose, God, in people's lives. Lord, I pray that as we wait to maybe see a promise fulfilled or we wait for your perfect timing to flesh out, we wouldn't wait in a passive manner, but in a proactive way. And as we do that, God, I just pray for renewed strength over my friends. God, I pray for renewed hope. God, I pray that they would rise up above the problems that are all around them and see from your perspective. God, for the individual who's been trying to figure out that thing, I pray that you would reveal in abundance your wisdom. God, we thank you that as we seek you, you will hear us. So God, we seek you first. We honor you, we trust you, and in your name we pray, amen. Thanks for watching. But before you go, please be sure to bookmark this page so that you can find us again next.